Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is why nobody lives in Alaska. Oh, I'm I'm gonna guess this is a similar thing to the uh, Canada. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it's inhabitable. Um, I also it's not easy access, is it? No, I'm, I'm guessing like this the top half, isn't it? I mean, probably the middle too. Yeah, you mean the not, higher bits and stuff. Yeah, like the that. bottom is is people live there. I, I don't, I, I don't actually know. I know there's a I few. I think they do because Anchorage is south. Is it okay? People live in Anchorage because I seen it on the proposal. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I, I honestly have no clue. Actually, I'm guessing it's like Canada, just loads of uninhabitable places. You also see all the time on movies, them dodgy little planes going across Alaska. That's the one they took to Anchorage. Oh, did they? The there little you go. ones with like the propellers. But... Yeah, and you think, oh, that's going to go down. So maybe people don't want to risk that as well. Well, we're going to find out anyway. If you enjoy this content, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. You absolute legends. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. What we got? This is Alaska. And this is the United Kingdom, Germany, Japan, and France. Okay. All major world powers with gross domestic products in the trillions and at least 65 million residents each. Here's the thing though, the state of Alaska isn't just larger than each of these powerful nations individually. <laughs> no, it's about 12.5% larger than all four of them combined. That's mad, isn't in fact, it? Combined. Alaska is only smaller than 15 of the world's 193 UN recognized countries. So you may be thinking that Alaska should have a population similar to nations like the United Kingdom, not just its fellow U.S. states, when that couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah. Because while Alaska is more than six times the size of the United Kingdom, for instance, its population That's of 736,000 residents is about 98% smaller. Ooh. And even the relatively modest state of Pennsylvania has a population that outnumbers Alaska's by about 20-fold meaning that Alaska has a population more in line with moderately popular U.S. cities than nations or state. powerhouse yeah. states. With just the city core of San Antonio having a population that about doubles the entire massively sized state of Alaska. To understand why that is and how Alaska has so few residents, especially for a state of its considerable size, we should rewind back through Alaskan history so that we can properly evaluate this predicament it finds itself in today. Inside. The history of modern Alaska started when the United States purchased it from Russia for $7.2 million in 1867. Now, okay. Alaska I mean, that, that yet... purchase would never happen nowadays. No. Like, even if it, whatever price they agreed, I'm sure Russia and the US would not, not be, be dealing with each other. <laughs> become a state back then? No, it was known as the Territory of Alaska all the way up until January 3rd, 1959, when Alaska and Hawaii, surprisingly enough, became the 49th and 50th US states, respectively. Of course, a lot happened in that 92 years between Alaska's purchase and its statehood, though. Yeah. Gold was discovered in 1880. Juneau was incorporated in 1900. Fairbanks was incorporated in 1903. Anchorage was founded in 1915. Yeah. Denali National Park was created just two years later in 1917. The Alaskan Railroad was completed in 1923 and the Alaska Highway System was built in 1942. And while that isn't yeah. an exhaustive list of Alaska's modern history, it does provide a strong overview of the state's initial settlement and rising importance. And well, as they say, the show must go on. Because frankly, I would argue that what's happened in Alaska since its statehood is even more important. Okay. That's because oil was first discovered in Alaska just two years before oh, it became a big money US state, mm -hmm. permanently altering Alaska's role in American society. See, while oil was first discovered only at Swanson River, further oil deposits were quickly found across the state of Alaska, solidifying the state as a hotspot for one of the most important natural resources in modern times. Of course, like Hawaii, Alaska isn't part of the contiguous United States. Yeah. No, in a perfect world, it's about 500 miles from the state of Washington. But travel between the lower 48 and Alaska requires passage through Canadian provinces, making that trip from Washington more along the lines of a couple thousand miles in reality. That's a big gap in it. Mm. Which, again, many is also mad that it's the same country. Yeah. It's thousands of miles apart. And it's still the same country, which is mad as well, yeah. isn't it? The eight necessitated the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline, completed in 1977, but only after a remarkable level of setbacks, pushback, and payoffs. Oh, wow. Seriously, I could make an entire video on Alaska's history. So there's a, literally a pipeline going from Alaska mm. to the US. That's pretty impressive. No, 2,000 miles as the American epicenter for valuable resources. <laughs> but the point here is that the discovery of significant oil reserves in Alaska largely coincided with the rising popularity of internal combustion engines. With the discovery of oil there happening at a time where lawmakers in Washington, D.C. were already pushing for Alaska to officially join the Union. 
But this video is about why nobody lives in the state of Alaska, not the state's establishment. So I think we've already spent enough time looking at Alaska's initial settlement. By the year of 1970, Alaska's population had grown from 226,000 residents a decade before to 300,000 residents, with Good most increase. of those residents living in Alaskan urban cores where the oil and construction economy were thriving. That represents a healthy population growth rate of about 32% from 1960 to 1970. Good However, numbers. even yeah. if Alaska had continued growing at such a rapid rate from 1970 to today, the state would still only have a population of about 1.1 million residents. That would be a substantial increase of about 34% compared to the state's actual current population of 732,000 residents. But even then, down. Alaska mm. would still be one of the least populated U.S. states despite its ginormous size. Of course, that growth rate didn't hold up though, as the state of Alaska is significantly short of even a million residents today. I believe there are several reasons for that, for Alaska's small population and very low population density. I'm sure you already know that much of it comes down to Alaska's geography be and climate it. Yeah. because while Alaska's geography and climate differ from region to region, like any place else, on the whole, the state of Alaska is brutally cold and mountainous with harsh topography that's often frozen and difficult to traverse. With an average statewide temperature range of 0 degrees to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit from November to March. And Alaska yeah, see, that is, if you're living in somewhere where it's not too cold, it might be nice and warm. To make the switch to freezing all winter is hard. You wouldn't. Why would you? wouldn't. And then you can you? Unless you really enjoyed the cold and snow, why would you? I feel like a lot of people do like enjoy that and they would want to move to Alaska, but I feel like most people prefer the heat. Again, let us know in the comments. I personally prefer the heat. I, I do. I do. I don't really have a preference. I don't like it freezing. I mean, I don't mind it freezing. I kind of like the whole idea of snuggling yep. up with blankets and stuff, but I don't like it for long. Okay, got you, but on no, the, the flip same side, with the heat. it can be too much. I don't like much. the heat for long, so I literally, I'm quite happy in the UK. The British climate is good, It's all right, actually. It's, uh, it's my kind of climate. But we feel like we need some, don't we? And then we get it, and then we come back to our climate, like, thing happy is, days. I feel like everyone, everyone moans, whether it's too cold. Everyone says it's too cold, so then it gets really hot. Everyone says it's too hot. It's like, yeah, definitely. Um, it's good in small doses. And I suppose if you live in a state which is already quite cold, and you like the cold, why go extreme? And this, the thing is, well, like, People in Alaska, if we went there, we would find it so much colder than what they do because they're climatized. Very true that so as well. So if you, if it's all you know, definitely, no, nah, definitely. To 17 of the 20 tallest mountain peaks in the United States, along with more than three wow. million lakes and a whopping 3,000 rivers. It is Not stunning, to mention isn't it? the significant seismic activity there, something that has made it difficult to build out the state for more than a century now, with oh, Alaska wow. having more oh, earthquakes wow. than any other region of the United States. That's mad. It isn't just the natural disadvantages that go along with being one of the northernmost major settlements in the world, deeply separated from the rest of the United States, that has limited Alaska's population so severely though. But before I dive further into why nobody lives in Alaska, I think it's important to look at why 736,000 people do. True, First, I would say Alaska offers its residents and businesses some real financial incentives. It's one of only eight U.S. states without an individual income tax, oh, and wow. the Alaska Permanent Fund literally pays residents just for living there through a small portion of the state's excess annual oil revenues. As Alaska runs in a So what we need to do, if there's no income tax... We need to get millions and millions of subscribers, so subscribe, guys, and then move to Alaska and retire. <laughs> Way too cold. Yeah, too bad it's too, got too cold. <laughs> a rarity in today's world, and something that provides for less economic concern, as residents of several other states are stuck worrying about what their representatives will do to cover rising expenses, while Alaskans are able to collect part of their state's excess investment income every year. Okay. Alaska also has a comfortable median household income of about $80,000 and bad. a modest median That's home good. price of $338,000. That's because the Alaskan economy does well for itself with tourism, oil and gas, construction, and real estate. In fact, Alaska has a total GDP of nearly $50 billion and the nation's sixth highest per capita GDP of nearly $70,000. Okay. Then again, while the numbers in Alaska make a lot of sense, I would argue that it's the state's uniquely beautiful nature, oh, open stunning. spaces, and focus on personal freedom that attracts mm -hmm. more people than anything else. Though I'm sure some folks really just enjoy the Arctic winter. Because while Alaska has more coastline than all of the lower 48 states combined, much of it is frozen. 
So swimming and sunbathing are not going to have a vibe there. No, Alaska's culture is more rugged. And while culture there is generally more regional, I will say that individualism, nature, and recreation are the central themes. If you would like to see more of a regional breakdown of Alaska where I spend more time talking about livability and opportunity in the state's principal cities, like Anchorage, Fairbanks, and Juneau, please let me know in the comments section below. While this is the longest video I've ever made here at Something Different Films, I feel like I'm only scratching the surface of America's most unique state. That's but the there thing. are other reasons that Alaska has lost residents from its peak in 2016. That the state has only grown by 2.6% since 2010, wow. oh, and that it's lot. remained one of the least populated places in the U.S. since its founding. And we already talked about the harsh and lengthy winters there, the difficult topography that makes daily life so complicated, and the remoteness of Alaska in general, all of which are important factors to Alaska's limited population for sure. I would argue that it's also Alaska's very late start, as it was the last U.S. state to join the Union just 63 years ago. Oh, it's, it's, it's the fact that much years, of Alaska is not a long time. In terms of everything. Yeah, and when I think about, like, my nan is older than Alaska. There you go. I mean, being a state of America. Being a state of America, definitely. Um, um, that is, like, that is mad. Exactly. Then, like, it is playing catch-up. But then it's, like, the history that it's got in 60 years is... Yeah, definitely. Like I say, obviously, a lot of history before, a lot of history after as well. We're coming to Alaska. If, you know what? If the weather wasn't as harsh, it sounds like the perfect place. Yeah, it does. Because everything else but is... But I feel like... That is why everything else kind of works out. There's people because of the weather. Because it's so harsh weather. The vast landmass is owned by the government, corporate interests, or is unusable due to geographic complications. While affordable housing and good income there can't keep pace with the ever-rising cost of goods due to the complicated nature of shipping and warehousing outside of the sense. traditional yeah, grid. Makes sense. Alaska is dark and icy. It lacks city amenities, and the wildlife there isn't always, uh, let's just say, a feature. Yeah, they're not always friendly. Mm, it's cute though. <laughs> yeah, it's cute, but I would not want to go from say video. that. <laughs> yeah, from a video. Smash that button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. Enjoy that. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, I'd new... like to know a bit more about Alaska. Definitely, it sounds like a very interesting state. A gorgeous state it is just a harsh weather on it isn't it but there's definitely a lot more to unpack so let us know in the comments below if you want to check it out and watch the video have a fantastic day link to the channel is in the description and we'll see you legends in the next one peace